here's this real person. Her life was affected and she's telling her story. Just being so upset about not being part of a process and being left out, I was like, this is never gonna happen to us again. We're gonna be on the table where the decision making is happening, whether they like it or not. They handcuffed me and there was a back exit that I was taken through and put into a van. I didn't get the opportunity to say bye to my kids. I had three cases on my record, all drug-related cases, so there were possession charges. I didn't know who Sonia Farrakh was. I didn't know I had cases involving Sonia Farrakh on my record. So she's the one that said this person is going to jail. She was taking away their freedom. ACLU went to court. I was excited for everyone, not just me, but the thousands of other people who are involved with this. And the fact that the state, they lied, and now they're being held accountable for their actions. I've built a life with all of this wreckage of the past. To know that I have everyone from the ACLU in my corner, it makes me feel safe. They help me help other people. So in Massachusetts, there's this law that is very old that does not allow a regular citizen to be um, registered unless they do it 20 days before an election. So as a person who has been doing voter registration work for the past almost 30 years, one of the biggest challenges that we have with citizens is that they hardly ever pay attention when we're registering them to vote too early in the process. But it happens that right before an election, because of all the publicity that is given to these type of campaigns, people get engaged, they want to vote, they get involved. If they're not registered within that 20-day cutoff time, they're not able to vote. It was time for us to call our friends at ACLU and get the work done. And that's where we are right now. We won one of the first initial battles, which was basically that the judges acknowledged that there is a problem with the law. So it's a, for us, it was a huge victory that we celebrated here. We're changing the law for the state of Massachusetts together. We would have never been able to do this work without ACLU. My parents brought me here when I was three from Guatemala. I don't remember anything at all. I was raised in, in Providence, Rhode Island, and that's where I met Louis. We met in high school. When Luis and I went to our marriage interview, the immigration officer said, it looks clear to us that you guys are you're a, a legitimate marriage. Everything's OK. I'm going to go ahead and approve this. And then he said, you're all set. The only thing is I have other immigration officers that want to speak to you. And that's when they came in and I was detained. I wasn't given an explanation of why I was detained or where I was going or for how long or anything. You know, they just said I had to be processed and then I was going to be transferred to Suffolk House of Corrections. I asked them if I could say goodbye to my husband and they didn't even let me give him a hug or say bye to him. And that's kind of what hurt the most. You know, I didn't get the opportunity to say bye to my kids. Like if I would have known that I wasn't going to see them, I would have given them like the biggest hug. Do you want a minute? Yeah? Sorry. I kept on asking to speak to my lawyer and they would say, no, you know, they know you're here. And they wouldn't even let me see her. Luis reached out to ACLU Massachusetts and told them about my case. And I said, I believe we can help. 
Adriana is one of the lawyers for the ACLU who is pretty much taking care of our case. She was very optimistic. She said, you know, uh, this is an injustice. It's it's wrong. There, there's, there's so many things that immigration is violating, so many rules. They can't just detain you. It was just shy of a month when I was told to uh, pack all my things because I was being moved. Someone knocks on the door, opened it, and they said, OK, you're all set. We just need you to sign a paper saying that we're releasing you. That was it. It was just surreal. It was the same way that I was detained. It was the same way that I was released. You know, no one told me why. No one told me what was going on or what was going to happen next. It was just one of those, OK, here you go. It's unfair, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a wife or a husband, you shouldn't be separated from your family at all. Especially when you're just trying to do what's best for them or you're just trying to follow a system that the government implemented. You're trying to play by their rules and for you to be detained by trying to do that, it's, it's unfair. It's, you know, it, it shouldn't happen. Since then, the ACLU of Massachusetts have been hard at work. So what happened to me won't happen to other people.